Hello, I'm Sean Schaefer, Market Segment Manager at Makino. And today in our Makino Experience Center, we are gonna demonstrate how to jig grind dies and molds on a Makino Vertical Machining Center. At the end of this presentation, there'll be a Q&A and you can access the chat and we will try to answer your questions. At this time, I'd like to introduce Michael Fechtel. Michael Fechtel is our Senior Application Engineer at Makino with over 10 years experience. He has over 20 years experience in the field as well as has a BS in manufacturing, uh, manufacturing engineering at Ferris State University. Thank you, Sean. Good morning and thank you all for joining us for today's presentation of the future of lights out automation and closed loop jig grinding. What if you could consolidate several manual labor intensive processes into a one programmable push of a button operation that will give you confirmed results every time. How many of you have sent out a machine to run uh, through the night or over the weekend to come in the next morning to find out that that tool had worn out a couple tenths, rendering your parts out of tolerance uh, and needing a, a remachining operation to happen after that, that period of time? When listening to our customers' concerns like these, we identified several requirements that we needed to cover. The lack of manpower and skilled labor uh, has always been an issue, but has been becoming more and more of an issue over the last several years. For many of our customers, this creates a bottleneck in the grinding and finished tool room departments where these highly skilled individuals are needed. So we had to create a process that allowed our, our operator to operate several machines at the same time uh, and run unattended through the second and third shifts. For many of these types of parts, our customers had uh, a high surface finish requirements or needed a, the visual appearance of a surface ground area. Because they're more visually appealing and, and that surface grind is always associated with a very high quality, high accuracy part. With the parts having many tight tolerances and critical features, we needed to be able to reliably achieve less than a two-tenths to total tolerance on mating surfaces or mating components. This included perpendicularity, squareness, linear, and, and size dimensions. Reducing the total cycle time is always a demand from our customers, but it's even more important when we're looking at customers that have high cavitation molds or just high volume of, of parts going through that need this, this surface ground feature or, or high tolerance area. But it is even more important when they're cut, creating high cavitation molds with up to 128 identical pieces per side of the mold your total cycle time per part can really add up. So finding a reliable process that has a faster total process time is an absolute must. The current process method for a lot of these, these types of components is very labor intensive and it's usually a surface grinder that's, that's used to develop these, these features. This is typically a highly skilled tool maker needed to achieve these exacting tolerances. Uh, and there are typically five to six setups needed to get access and grind all six sides of these blocks. This becomes a very uh, labor and time consuming process with a large variance in the results dependent upon the individual operator on that machine and their, their quality standards per individual. One of the big labor intensive time consuming parts is the inspection method. Uh, and it's, it's very similar for, for all these surface grind features. It's a highly skilled tool maker who has many setups needed to inspect his parts just like the setups he has on a surface grinder, adding to your total cycle time. With these problems plaguing our customers, we wanted to find the best solution for them. So we collected data and, requ and the required tolerances that they're targeting, types of features and applications, then set out to develop a process that would uh, deliver confirmed exacting tolerances without operator intervention. Thus, we created the closed loop tolerance control and closed loop jig grinding process. Today, we're going to discuss closed loop jig grinding and tolerance control process. What the benefits are to you, the customer, uh, how this process can save you money, what products we have that it's available on, some of the applications or industries we see this process being applied to, and 
uh, the ready to run demo we have available for you to come in and see in our Doc Makino die mold facility. For this task, we needed a machine platform that was configured to grind and mill within the two tenths with continuous operation. To maintain the accuracy, the machine must uh, be configured to have proper protection on the weight covers and ball screws for both milling and grinding processes. Having an engineered coolant filtration system to handle both milling and grinding chips is also a, a must in this case. A thermally controlled spindle, ball screws, and casting are required for that, a long, uh, continuous operation. And the V56i and the V33i are a perfect match for these requirements, having all these features built into them. In this process, we'll be completing uh, the hard milling verification and grinding uh, of the workpiece in one machine setup with one program and one push of that cycle start button. When the machine cycle is completed, the part will be complete and verified within the tolerance that you specified in your CAM system. This process breaks down into five steps that can repeat themselves when needed. First step that we're going to be going through is, is in the programming phase, and this is where we're designing our entire process for both hard milling the part, the cleaning, and the, the, the verification and grinding portions of the part. Completing the entire process timeline in the CAM system to then send to the machine. Once in the machine, we typically want to start off with a hard milling process. This way it is getting our part into the near net shape for the grinding areas but then also doing the semi-finishing and finishing in the molded areas or the trim areas. We then jump in and verify that we completed and, and machine to size all those critical features we'd like. And then we can jump in and grind if needed those critical areas. And then at the end, verify again after grind that it's within those tolerances that we specified. So in this, we want to determine why and, and what areas we need to grind on the part. For this, we, we want to look at the, the tolerance required in those areas and the surface finish. And what we found with grinding is we can achieve and, and remove very minimal amount of stock uh, repeatedly on, that, on the machine utilizing a grinding process. So here, if I find that uh, a process left maybe a tenth or so or more than what was desired, I can utilize a grinding wheel and grinding process to take off that last couple tenths. The beautiful thing is that because we're grinding, is very little uh, tool deflection and tool pressure that's being applied. And that's how we can remove the last couple tenths or couple microns of material uh, very accurately and repeatably. This also allows us to maintain great uh, just dimensional accuracies, both squareness and perpendicularity because of that minimal tool deflection that's, that's occurring on that part. So in that first step in our CAM system really comes down to the bulk of the planning process. The first step is going to be in programming. Here we're creating a high-speed roughing strategy, semi-finishing and finish milling tool paths. Uh, in, in areas we'd like to uh, be doing our grinding operations, we're going to leave the appropriate plus stock. In this same CAM system, we're going to produce our probing routine for the desired areas, specifying different tolerances for critical areas. We're going to create a cleaning tool path uh, to clean the areas that we're going to be then probing. And then we're also going to be creating a grinding tool path for the desired areas. So first up in this process, we're in, in a roughing strategy. We can be roughing and semi-finishing up to 98 Rockwell or, or carbide, the very high hardness materials that are very common in the dye mold world. So here we can see just a simple block prep, getting that surface ready for the grinding process that's gonna be happening. Next up is gonna be our probing routine or verification. Here we're utilizing the spindle probe that we had optioned onto the machine. Uh, and via the CAM system, we're programming the critical points that we'd like to control the tolerance of. For this, we simply specify in the CAM system the points we want to be inspecting, the tolerance associated with it, and the, the, where the rewind loops are going to be taking place inside the, the entire NC file. 
So after the probe cycle is completed, it verifies if it's in tolerance. If it's not, it rewinds to the, the re-roughing stage or roughing stage. If it passes that tolerance band specified, it progresses into the next step, in this case being the grinding portion. In the grinding portion, we determine, again, that the chop cycle we want to utilize. Uh, and here we can see that it's an actual chop motion like you'd see in a jig grinding machine. Here we're producing that same visual jig ground finish uh, as you would be getting off of your, your traditional jig grind machine. The beauty is being in the CNC milling center is that we can grind over any 2D contour. So including out corner radiuses or just large sweeping arcs uh, can all be ground in that machine very simply. After the grinding portion is completed, it then moves into a cleaning and then again another verification confirming that it's that ground surface is within the desired tolerance. Once it passes this inspection, it moves on and it completes its cycle or into the next operation. A lot of cases, customers after grind and after finishing the uh, critical fitment features, they move in and they do the hard milling, semi-finish and finish milling of the, the mold features that we see here. After we completed this testing, we determined that we were able to achieve a 0.6 micro inch or a 0.15 micrometer surface finish. And this is programmable to be rougher or finer finish dependent upon your cutting conditions, all which are able to be calculated and programmed into your NC file. In a dimensional inspection, we found the taper was at one micron or 40 millionths over that Z height, which is approximately an inch and a half. The size, we, were, we achieved 80 millionths or two micron tolerance. And then location from, from the XY center, we achieved, again, another 80 millionths or two micron tolerance. In addition to hitting all of our targeted accuracies, we look at our total processing time in comparison to our manual process that the customer is currently doing. They're at a, a little over three hour processing time for grinding all five surfaces. And in our one setup on the machine, we achieved uh, cycle time at 1.5 hours. This is a 50% uh, reduction in cycle time. We look at the other benefits of this of being from coming from five manual setups down to one setup on the machine while maintaining the, the accuracy because of our, our palletized system. Our accuracy, we're able to get a huge reduction versus customers process from plus or minus two tenths down to plus or minus 80 millionths. Our surface finish, we're able to tightly control based off of how we're programming the part. And in this case, beating out what the customer is able to produce by, by a large margin as well. Looking at the results we achieved compared to how a shop typically processes the grinding portion of the same part, we can see some huge savings. Here, the customer using traditional gr surface grind strategy had five setups, one for each face, and spent over three hours to grind these same five surfaces. In the Makino V33i, we achieved an accuracy less than half of what the surface grinder achieved, and we achieved a very consistent surface finish well below the average of the, the surface grinder. This adds up to over 50% cost savings, and that's creating a more accurate and a better finish and did not require any manual operator intervention. It's simply programmed up front, loaded into the machine, and having the cycle executed. Some of the key reasons we see customers needing this machine in process is to remove the number of setups needed, to have the ability to run unattended and automate, picking up lost hours of machine time, increasing your quality control because every part can have the critical features checked in the machine and a report printout at the end of that machine tied to that individual part. A programmable and uniform surface finish every single time. And one machine to handle hard milling and grinding which reduces the floor space needed. Exacting tolerances can remove the need to hand fit uh, and make it easier for replacement parts in the future. 
We see this application fitting in very well for a lot of our customers, but specifically in the high cavitation molds and in the fine blanking and trim die industry where a ground or jig ground finish is really required. With over 50% cycle reduction in this grinding process, we can extrapolate out the cost savings per year and over different shifts. Then we can put some rough numbers together uh, on being able to drastically reduce the scrap parts and the need for hand fit up. Here we can see that just in one shift per year, we have a cost savings of $85,000 in simply cycle time savings alone not to mention the savings from the scrap and then the reduction in time of, of not having the hand fit up process. Then we can extrapolate it out over the second and third shift over the course of a year. And looking at three shifts over the course of the year, we're looking at $255,000. Uh, bringing your total ROI for a machine platform like this down to a very short period of time. As I mentioned in the beginning, we selected the V33i and V56i platforms for this specific reason is because it's an extremely rigid, accurate platform that has all the latest and greatest machine uh, Makino technologies combined together. It has a heavy cast iron construction, a thermally controlled casting, ball screw and spindle, unique axis configuration being the bridge design, the Makino spindle, advanced control technologies, and thermally controlled machine platform. This gives you the results of having a volumetrically accurate machine over extremely extended machine times. Another key component in this process is having a very rigid spindle that's capable of running a roughing strategy and then the high RPM finishing strategies uh, without any special considerations due to lack of rigidity. And so utilizing the Makino patented uh, core cool technology spindle, we're able to achieve all of that criteria by having a thermally stable spindle uh, that's rigid over all RPMs. With Makino's superior control technology being in our Pro 6 controller and our SGI.5 uh, motion control technology, we can do all that high speed machining uh, strategies in a very reduced cycle time while achieving very high level surface finishes and accuracies. And the new Pro 6 user interface makes it very streamlined and quick and easy for the operators to load programs and execute their program. Uh, the two products we have available, again, are V33i and 56i both available in our 20 and 30,000 RPM spindle interfaces, available with through spindle air standard and then through spindle coolant on our 20,000 RPM spindles. In this ready to run demo that we've created, we are performing a free form OD chop grind and contour grind, then utilizing the plate machining option, we are milling and grinding the two dowel holes. Then the final operation is face grinding. With these grinding operations, we're also utilizing the closed loop tolerance control feature to where we're inspecting the part, auto comping when needed, and rewinding and regrinding or reprocessing when, when needed. In summary, the V33i and V56i are uniquely designed to give you these exacting tolerances uh, in our closed loop jig grinding process and tolerance control. Now we'd like to open this up to our live Q&A. Well, we, this is Sean Schaefer from Makino. I um, hope you enjoyed the presentation. And at this time, we'd like to field any questions you had about the material that we discussed in the Q&A in the upper right. I had a couple questions come to me, Mike, that I'll just throw at you for previously. Um, what kind of grinding tools did you use uh, in this process? Uh, yeah, that's a, uh, a very good question because it's, it's kind of new to a lot of people, right? So um, 
there it's a vetrified bonded wheel and it's a very similar wheel to what a lot of people currently run in their jig grinders uh, the particular slide we have up there is uh, is a metal bonded wheel so it's a a cbn particle uh, that's metal bonded or metal plated to that particular wheel uh, some of the other testing we've done is using that vetrified wheel uh, and that allows us to get longer uh, tool life out of that tool because we're able to redress it um, after some taper has worn into that, that particular tool. Um, and that's uh, getting into maybe some, some non-ferrous materials like aluminum. Uh, you can get into utilizing some diamond, uh, diamond abrasives as well, uh, but it really depends on the material group. Appreciate it. Um, on the example that you used in this presentation, um, how much time did you spend hard milling versus grinding in this uh, demo part? Hmm. So uh, in this particular part, I think we're at like a 60-40, a, a so 60% hard milling, 40% grind. And that's really where we find this, uh, this process fitting well into for, for our customers and where we recommend for the machine. Um, is keeping like a 50-50 or 60-40 uh, ratio of, of milling and grinding. Uh, this is, is not a, a solution to replace a jig grinder that's this, to where this machine will be jig grinding day in and day out. Uh, it's, it's, this process is really to be uh, used as a combination machine, um, allowing for reduced setups, uh, your cycle time reduction because now you're you're able to jig, you're able to grind on the machine versus a surface grinder uh, and really minimize overall plant floor space because it's bringing it into one machine platform. Okay. Um, you were showing the chopping cycle in one of the uh, videos. Uh, is that the only grinding cycle that we have available to us? Nope. Um, originally, uh, a bit of the development was for jig grinding because that's what the customer was looking for uh, for their desired surface finish. And that's because that was being driven from their customer because that's what they're used to seeing. And everyone knows uh, or has a perspective that a jig ground finish means, you know, uh, uh, a very highly skilled uh, tool room or, or tool operator, uh, tool maker produce that, that part and really jig round finish is associated with, with high quality and high accuracy. We also did a bit of testing with, with a contour grind. So just like a helical milling of uh, uh, the OD of your part, you can do the exact same process, but with a grinding wheel. Uh, and some of the benefits of this is a uh, very reduced cycle time. Uh, and then we can also, we can helical down and we can helical up which will allow for uh, a little more even tool wear on that, that grinding wheel itself. I have another question came here um, from a customer of a attendee. It says, uh, how about the hole circularity as compared to the actual jig grind hole? Hmm. No, that's a good question, and this is where the, the, the uh, accuracy of the machine platform really comes into play uh, and why we selected the V-series platforms. Uh, if we look at our, our stats for, uh, essentially, it's, it comes down to roundness, right? Uh, we're looking at maybe two, two to three microns of, of concentricity or circularity. Um, now, this is, this is going to be a different process than what a jig grinder will do where uh the in this machine the xy uh motion is what's creating that that circularity versus in a jig grinder where they have the offset head that simply spins or offsets a mandrel spindle and then simply uh spins around that axis so it is a, a different concept and process being utilized uh but utilizing the v33 and 56i platforms we're able to hold that very tightly as well. Okay. Uh, one more question here for you, Mike, is uh, what is the smallest diameter wheel you can use for this process? Yep. So 
uh, the smallest diameter wheel uh, that's that's usable in this process is really limited to what what uh, what they can make, right? What what a what the smallest jig grinding mandrel uh, that they make is. Uh, one big difference is typically your your jig grinders are traditionally a very high RPM spindle, like up to 120,000 RPMs. Uh, here on these platforms, we're we're in a 20 and 30,000 RPM range, so you may not be able to see uh, uh, the same cycle times as you would with the, the high RPM spindles with the small tools. Um, but it's really limited on on what whatever's able to be produced by the the mandrel manufacturer. Uh, the machine movements capable of, of, of achieving any any size feature. Okay. Um, I just want to thank everybody for attending. And if you have any further questions, you're welcome to contact uh, Michael at his email. It's on the slide above. And we will be posting this to our archives, which you can locate under makino.com events and past events or archives. You can find this uh, there shortly. Again, thank you for attending. And thanks, Mike, for the presentation. Yep. Thank you, guys. Take care. Good afternoon.